Good morning. Welcome this morning to Spirit of Life Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Rob Smith, and we're really thankful for all of you gathered here, all of you that have come, and all of you joining us from home. Help connect with each other. Help, help share greetings from home with each other as we seek to get to know you and you get to know other people online. And here, let's make the effort today, the effort to reach out and get to know somebody you don't know very well as, as we seek in God's love, God's reconciling love, God's connection to us, how we connect with each other. We had some technical issues. We still have technical issues that are, are happening. And as uh, the wise prophet Van Morrison once said, my mama told me there will be days like this. <laughs> and um, so it's with that, like our sermon today mostly is a dosa that has recorded something online and it's wonderful and we're getting so much feedback through our system that, uh, that, that the pastor is going to preach on the fly today. And we're going to share a dosa sermon. We're going to find a way to share her sermon next week because she's done a wonderful job. Um, she has a great message to share. Sorry, Adosa, when you catch the recording, um, but we will make sure that next week in Transfiguration Sunday that your message is shared. So now with all of that, let us, with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our souls, and all of our strength, let us worship God. Good morning. I'm Loretta Hunt. <laughs> Together we come from many places, backgrounds, personalities. Together we come many ethnicities, age, and genders. Together we come with different questions, doubts, and reasons. Together reminded to ask and to it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. Together, let us worship God. Before we sing our opening song, I would like to teach you um, part of this song. I think what we're going to do first is we're going to just sing the first verse so everybody knows this, and then we're going to learn an alleluia part, and then we're going to sing it together. So we'll just sing the first verse. is just the words Alleluia. We'll do it both the low and the high voices. Here we go. You're going to do the verse. This side here. This side. Yep. You all, we're going to do the Alleluia. And then we're going to switch. Second verse. We're going to do the second verse over here. And you're going to do the Alleluia. Okay.
That was lovely. Amen. And now Martha's signing up all of you for the choir. Sounds like a plan. Wednesday night. Let us pray. Search us, O oh God, and find within us the secrets we hide. Ask us, O oh God, and receive from within us the pain we bear. Continue knocking at our door that we come to find you awakening purpose and meaning and life. When we lose our way, when we ask once and move on, when we back away from the door, strengthen our courage, bolster our endurance, kindle with us a spark that leads us back to you. Amen. Friends, hear the good news that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you now. Let's take some time and let's share that peace of Christ with each other at home. Help greet each other and share peace with everyone else online. Let us pray. God of love, you encourage us to live our lives in faith, patience, and love. Help us to love others without judging, but with acceptance. Speak to us today in your word. Amen. This morning's scripture is taken from the gospel according to Matthew. Listen for God's word. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgments you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye? But do not notice the log in your own eye. Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye. 
while the log is still in your eye. You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few to find it. Everyone then who bears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell. The great and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. This is the word of the Lord. Can I ask for our kids to please come up? Hi, Junior. Good morning. How are you? Hey, Johnny. Hi, Kenji. Hi, Maya. Hey, Charlie. Good morning. Hi, Jimmy. How's your week been? You had a good week? Yeah? It's kind of nice that the weather's gotten warmer, isn't it? Have you, been out, have you gotten outside to play more this last week? No? You haven't? Maybe this afternoon, you think? Nope, nope, nope. Well, I'm going to ask you some knock-knock jokes, okay? Knock-knock. Who? Are you an owl? Knock-knock. Cow. No, silly. Cows say moo. The owl says who. You had it right the last time. Knock, knock. Canoe. Can you come outside and play with me? No. No? Too hot. Too hot. Too cold? Mercy, you're a tough crowd today. <laughs> Will someone out there come out and play? <laughs> Jimmy, thanks, Jimmy. So did, did you hear that part in our scripture today? It says, knock and you shall find. Knock and the door will be asked and the door will be open unto you. Seek and you will find. But it takes knocking first, right? Just like when we go knock on a friend's house. 
Um, do we still do that or do we like text them or something? Do we still go knock and say, can you come out and play? Or, Yeah, that used to be, when I grew up, that's how we'd get friends to come out and play. Is we'd go knock on the neighbor's door. We'd knock and, and they'd come out and they'd play. And I want you to look out here. Let's, let's look at everybody. And then let's look at the cameras because they can see us. Wave at the cameras. Okay. Um, why do we go and knock on a door of a friend's house? Why do we go do that? Yeah, because we see if they'll answer. Because we all need friends, right? Yeah. We, we all need friendships. Look out here. Everybody here needs, we all need friends. Everybody at home. We, 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 all need, we all need these relationships. And the deepest one we have that helps us to see everything, the one that helps, the one that helps center, the one that helps us to see everything differently and how we love and how we live is knocking on God's door, knocking on the door. And, and, and we do, how, what are some ways that we can knock on the door to seek Jesus? Not like this, but we come to church is one of them, like, right? And I really believe, like, I can go to the mountaintop. I can go on a hike by myself. And those are important ways to experience God. I believe that we experience God in the sunsets, in the beauty of creation. But I don't think we can do it alone, fully alone. We need each other because I know God better by knowing Junior. Because you see God, and if I'm knocking and see God, I can hear your stories, and it helps strengthen me in knowing God better. And if Charlie and, and, and Junior and I, we're knocking on God's door, and we're doing Bible study, and we're helping, we help, we're help, helping people, and you share stories, I get to know God better. So we need each other. And so it's kind of like going and knocking on our friend's door. We, we knock on God's door, and God listens, and God is there for us. Will you pray with me? Hello, God. We thank you for answering in all the ways we knock. And when we're lost, please come see us. Amen. Thanks, guys. I said I was going to start to do it in the center today. But that's before I knew I was going to try to pull the whole sermon off here. So, um, but we're going to, we're, we got it, don't we? We got this. Knock, knock. Atch. Achoo. Do you need a Kleenex? Knock, knock. Yeah. Giddy up. Knock, knock. Noah. Noah, anybody will come up and do a sermon? <laughs> knock, knock. Gorilla. Will you please gorilla me a hamburger? Part of our scripture today, along with the knock, knock, is the foundations. Uh, we just had this scripture two or three weeks ago in Meet in the Middle. Uh, the the building, building a house on a firm foundation. And I think it's directly connected with knocking, with knocking, with, with knocking on Jesus' door and asking, and asking for help, asking the places where, where we're lonely, asking for God into our lives. The connection that we have is so important and crucial. And I love the, uh, every time I hear the story of, of the one who builds their house on sand, I can't help but think of the three little pigs every time um, because it's the, it's the same story. It's the same story of building, of, of, of building a home that can withstand all of the storms. But we do this by not how we knock. We do this by, by asking. But how many of us are good at asking in those places that we need help before it's crisis time. 
How many of us before, before it, we need full triage are good at calling and saying, I'm struggling right now. This is a place where, where I, can, I, I, I feel alone. I could use somebody to have a meal with. How many of us in these places are good at knocking on that door? And we, I can't help but hear the connection of foundations, but also um, the sheep and goat story of whatever we do for the least of these. And, and when, when is it that we saw you, Lord? When, when, you, uh, when, you fed, when you fed somebody that was hungry, when you provided clothing, when, when you visited the person in prison, whatever you do. And it's all the ways that we see Christ in each other. We're good at We all want to be able to respond when somebody's in need. But I'm going to ask us to, to do better at reaching out and sharing those places for ourselves to be vulnerable. The vulnerable places that allow... because. Because it's a gift to be able to share. It's, it's a gift to be able to provide a ride. It's a gift to be able to say, hey, the most important thing right now is what you have going on and to be there for each other. And so that's the part, that's part of the knocking. And, and we're going to hear more from Adosa next week as she takes this part even deeper of how she has found community, and it started with her knocking on somebody's door. It started with her reaching out. But I'm not going to do any more spoilers with that because that will be more next week. But for us, I'm reminded of, um, in Brene Brown's book, um, Dare to Lead, she shares uh, one of her clients um, is... U.S. Air Force Colonel D.D. D. Halfhill. She's, she's commander of the 2nd Mission S Support Group at Barksdale Air Force in Louisiana. And she was presenting a, an award at a squadron event where she had 40 Air Force cadets show up when she was presenting this award. award. And at the end of the presentation, she asked if anyone had any questions, and a young airman raised his hand, and he asked, Ma'am, when is the ops tempo, the pace of current operations, when is it going to slow down? Because we are really tired. Her initial response was to acknowledge that the people were tired, but she had a sense, something overcame her, and she had a sense that maybe there's something more. So then she, she proceeded to ask, if I were to ask you instead of who's tired, who's lonely, how many of you would raise your hand? Because sometimes this is what happens, right? When we're lonely, we feel lethargic. We don't really want to do anything. And when we're tired, we just want to sleep. She asked, is there any... Instead of being exhausted, are you lonely? And out of 40, 15 raised their hand. And those were the 15 that had the courage to raise their hand, and how many more? And so when we are exploring as a congregation, a community of faith, I can't help but this last year um, with a nephew who took his life. Outwardly, everything was fine. Outwardly, everything was going for him. He, as an uh, as a athlete that was a captain, somebody that everybody looked to, but underneath all of that, I think would be one of those that would raise his hand of loneliness, of missing connection, and so this week, as community, wherever those places are, as we seek to grow deeper, deeper in knocking on the door of Jesus in our life, of God in our life, of faith in our life, the ways that it helps connect us to, to the, the center that helps us to see everything brighter and more beauty, it's a lot of that is also the most important part is the relationships that surround us. 
You know, if I were to ask all of us, how many would raise their hand? And I have a feeling, especially as everything the last few years has brought, all of the things that have, were even in place before that, that studies show that there's an epidemic and we need each other. We need God. We need God in our lives. God is with us. God is already there. But whatever the distraction may be that keeps us from seeing, and that's why we knock. We knock. Maybe that narrow door. Um, I think the gospel is something. The message itself isn't hard. The message is, narrows down to, to one asking Jesus, what's the most important commandment? And he says, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And story after story are the complicated He makes something that simple that's so hard. And so let's go forward from here, knocking. Knocking, seeing the Christ in each other, seeing the Christ in, in when we need, whether, whether it's to share a meal, whether it's as, as simple as a ride, whether it's picking up something at the store, mostly it's each other. Knock and ask. Knock and, and, and say canoe jokes. Canoe, canoe, come out and play. It's the same thing we needed when we were five. It's the same thing we need when we're 51. And it's the same thing we need when we're 85. We need each other. Christ is with us. May we be there with each other. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Today, as we come to offer ourselves, our time, our talents, and our financial resources, we share the ways we love, speak, and care in response to you. That as your people, we give dignity to the outcast, feed the hungry, care for the sick, visit the imprisoned, clothe the naked, and give water to the thirsty. Amen. At this time, if the ushers will come forward, the morning offering will be received.
seated. As we prepare for sharing our prayers, I welcome all online to be sharing those, and those will be shared up front with me. Um, let's continue in our prayers. It was shared through prayer chain this week, but I share with all of you, um, Joan Emden, um, all of you who've been coming for a, for a few years, um, Joan has not been in person since before COVID, um, but Joan has, has moved this last week into hospice care. And uh, Joan's a wonderful, delightful, loving, um, and she shared with me this, this last week um, as I went in to, to see her and, um, with confidence and a big smile. She shared, I'm, Pastor Rob, I'm actually excited. This has been a mystery my whole life, and soon I'm going to find out. What faith, a wonderful faith. And so be with her. Um, also, Rose's, Rose's dear friend, Susan, um, died this week. And so we surround you with our prayers and, and Susan's family, um, all of her loved ones. Let us bring all of our prayers, all of ourselves before God. God of grace and love, we thank you for our life and that we share it in community. We thank you for calling us to ministries of hope and compassion. We pray for your grace to do all that you ask of us, to choose life, to love you and our neighbors without reserve, not half-heartedly, but with our whole selves. Holy God, we bring, bring before you the cares, the concerns and joys that occupy us, we remember before you those who are at odds with one another, the rifts in families and neighborhoods or offices and communities and in the church, all those across political aisles and deep-seated divisions. Dear Lord, we pray for the nations of your world asking us all to consider our interconnectedness and shared humanity. We come especially this week praying for the people of Turkey and Syria in the wake of devastating earthquakes. Help to be with all of those who mourn, with death tolls rising now above 28,000. Be with all of the families and be with the first responders working in dangerous conditions, risking life to search for life. And be with all the survivors who've experienced tremendous amounts of trauma. We remember those weighed down with needs of heart and soul, a worry that keeps us awake at night, grief that accompanies us everywhere we go, depression that clouds us, or an addiction that grips us and those we love. Lift all these heavy burdens with the light and peace of your presence, we pray. Sustain us over the long journey toward health and wholeness and give us trust in you, ourselves, and those who love us. Today, we lift in prayer Joan Emden and her family. She's moved into hospice care, and she's preparing for this next chapter. Give her strength. Surround her with your comfort and peace. God, we pray for Rose McMurray and the loss of her friend Susan this week, and Susan's family and her loved ones. And also, Rose this week lost her... Rose's sister-in-law's mother, Mary. Lord, surround them with your compassion. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember before you not only our cares, but also our joys, all things that are life-giving, birthdays celebrated, anniversaries enjoyed, a baby born, a new job, a new relationship, Traditions and Super Bowl parties. God and all of life, we are yours. We belong to you. 
And it's with this that we come to you praying the words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine's the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For some announcements of what's coming up, if you can believe it, um, Ash Wednesday is the 22nd, so that's coming around soon. So that Wednesday, we will have a, a blended worship. We'll have a worship that's online and in person. Um, for all of those that join us online, there's going to be a labyrinth that you share together of, of tracing with, with, with doing some artwork. And in person, we are going to walk the labyrinth for, for, the, for the service. And so join us on the 22nd for, for, for beginning Lent, for marking, marking ourselves with ashes, remembering our humanity. And so be there for that. And then for, for the next six weeks, Wednesdays, we're going to have a community meal at 6 o'clock. For all of you at home, when we move into devotion, we're going to share it online and we're going to have packets out so that you can be joining us from home for, for the six-week Lenten series on Wednesdays. And so, where's a couple more? Oh, I missed these two prayers. I tell you, I closed my eyes for a good part of the prayer and I missed these darn things. Oh, sorry about that. Let's pray. Oh, God, in all of life, we, we, we lift our prayers, we lift our lives. We pray, dear God, for Larry Jr. Prayers for Larry Jr. as he undergoes heel surgery on Friday. He has a difficult time and needs our prayers and support. Lord, hear our prayer. And God, we lift Michelle Murphy, we prayers for Michelle as she, for continual prayers, as Michelle's mental health is much better and we give thanks and we hope, we hope that she's gonna be out of the hospital this week. And dear Lord, we give thanks for the improvements, continue to work and bring healing that she can be home. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. It takes a village to raise a pastor, so thank you for that. Um, let us stand and go out singing soon and very soon. I think, I think what she's trying to say is, can she get a hallelujah? Well, better than hallelujah. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you all. Thank you for all the ways that you show courage. 
Um, R- Ryan, Ryan Kearns always has a good way after worship of saying, it was good, we worshiped God and nobody got hurt. <laughs> and so, uh, so thank you tech crew uh, with all of the challenges and all, all that creates and I, we, we thank you for the work you do. Um, reminded, we worship, nobody was hurt, it's good. So this week, this week as, as we get ready for transfiguration and the season of Lent, know that God is with us. Know, know that God loves us. Know that God is calling us into life. Life that is wonderful and a gift. A gift to be shared. A gift to be shared as, as we seek. In all of these ways that we're called to ask, we're also called to reach out. So let's be reaching out. Let's be caring for each other, knowing that you are loved and our neighbor that needs to know that, help share it with them too. May this love, the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the peace and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.